before that, 2012, did you did your job um, bring you into connection with um, the Horizon IT system in any way? I don't believe so. After 2012, what was the extent of your connection to the Horizon IT system? So my connection was to the post office. Um, we had a number of contracts with the post office, one of them being Horizon, uh, one of them being the uh, um, telecoms contract, so their home phone and broadband contract. And it was my team who were responsible for the sale of the uh, uh, services associated with the new telecoms contract uh, and clearly any renewal or extension to the Horizon system um, subsequently. Did you remain in that role until you t took up your present position in 2019? Uh, no, I, um, that, that role changed, so I became um, a European head of sales and business development and uh, I did not have uh, a direct team involved in the post office then. So how long did your involvement with the post office last? I would... Uh, four years, five years. In that four to five year period, let's call it between 2012 and... Um, 2014, uh, sorry, 2016, 2017. Um, how um, regularly uh, were you dealing with issues concerning the Horizon IT system? So I wasn't dealing with uh, issues. Okay, dealing with the post office account insofar as it concerned uh, the Horizon IT system. So my engagement and my sales team's engagement was what was very much focused on the new business into the post office. Um, it wasn't dealing with the service delivery, albeit clearly at times um, in those conversations the post office may have asked me questions about um, um, service delivery and that would have been passed on to the relevant service delivery team. That was my um, next question. To what extent were you um, cited on issues or problems with service delivery? in that four to five year period, so far as Horizon was concerned? So I think in several different meetings with post office executives when we were discussing the changes to the contract, so I think in about 2012, 13, they were looking to change the contract structure into a tower structure. In some of those meetings, we would have definitely made some reference to problems given I was in the room, and that would have been handed back into the uh, service delivery team. Uh, to your recollection, did any of those um, engagements concern um, data reliability, data integrity, or similar issues? Well, so in the pack that I've got for, in this supplementary pack, I think, for in, in today's uh, hearing, mm. um, there is a reference to uh, questions asked of me and a colleague by the CIO, which we passed on to, which was talking about that very point. Um, I'm not going to go into that in detail today. I just want to get an overview today for the purposes of the questions I'm going to ask you subsequently of your uh, the extent to which you knew of issues concerning Horizon before you became CEO in 2019 or whether you were coming to these issues completely afresh in 2019. What would be the answer to that? I, in 2019, in my appointment, I was, of course, aware that there were issues regarding prosecutions. It, clearly there was the public uh, case as well. So I was, I was aware on a personal level there were issues with the uh, um, prosecutions. Uh, so I was aware of those, those topics. Before you became CEO in 2019? Yes. The next event is the event you refer to in February 2021, um, a, a report by Fujitsu to the post office. Uh, that's the 22nd of February 2021, so a year and three months after the judgment. Fujitsu writing a report to the post office. What do you understand the purpose of that report to have been? I'm not quite sure I un understand the question. So Mr Justice Fraser produces his judgment, mm -hmm. finds the existence of 29 bugs, errors and defects, spends 105 pages analysing them, and then 13 months later, Fujitsu write a report 
to the post office about those 29 bugs, errors, and defects. And I was asking, uh, what was your understanding of the purpose of the writing of that report? So in my, in the company's second corporate statement, we lay out um, details on the 29. Yes, I'm going to come to that in a moment. Okay. I think it was, so I don't know, Mr. Beer, I'm afraid, I don't know, I haven't seen the physical report. It's one of the exhibits to your statement, number 260 there. I'm not going to display it at the moment. Uh, but I just want to understand when the judge has found the existence of these 29 bugs, why um, a year and a month later, Fujitsu is writing a report to the post office about those 29 bugs. So I don't know, Mr. Beer. To summarise, in Appendix 1 to this witness statement, you've set out 29 summaries relating to the 29 bugs, errors and defects found to have existed by Mr. Justice Fraser, correct? Correct. I'm going to look through some um, uh, examples of those. I'm not going to go through all 29 in a moment. So we can see what they look like and uh, the kind of things that they tell us. But all of this information, uh, would you agree, was available to Fujitsu? Um, indeed to you, because it's in your witness statement written in December 2022, but also earlier than that in the Bugs, Errors and Defects report of February 2021. Yes, because the information is there. That's how we produce the, um, produce the report, uh, we produce the documents in the second statement, correct? And so in terms of something you said at the beginning of the, um, your evidence today about um, the inquiry examining complex issues, and the inquiry, uh, Fujitsu wanting to wait until essentially the inquiry has reported in relation to this issue. And I'm not saying that uh, for a moment that the Fujitsu summaries of the bugs, errors and defects are um, complete or um, should be taken to be the final word on each bug, error or defect. But from Fujitsu's perspective, is this, is this right? As a company, um, for at the last couple of years, it, it has known of the existence of these bugs, errors, and defects at a corporate level. Yes, in fact, all the bugs and errors have been known at one, one level or not for many, many years, um, right from the very start of um, deployment of, uh, of this system. There were bugs and errors and defects which were, which were well known. To all parties, actually. You agree, I think, therefore, if we take the Fujitsu summaries read together with the bugs, errors and defects report as a baseline, it, it follows that at a senior level in the company for the last couple of years, there has been corporate knowledge of the existence of these bugs. I have... I have known about these bugs because I've seen the report. Yes, would be my answer. And so there's no need to wait for the conclusion of this inquiry to find out at least this information because it's already known to Fujitsu? Yes, correct, and it's in the statement, correct. Um, would you agree with um, the, the following uh, points? Uh, firstly, in each case, uh, Fujitsu agrees that the bug, error, or defect existed? Yes. Um, secondly, on Fujitsu's own assessment, by looking at this um, appendix, uh, the bugs afflicted both Legacy Horizon and Horizon Online? Yes. No. Thirdly, uh, we can see by reference to this summary, and in particular if we read it alongside the Bugs, Errors and Defects report, which contains much more detail, we can see the date on which, according to Fujitsu at least, the bug, error or defect was recorded or recognised by Fujitsu. Yes. Fourth, we can see the impact that Fujitsu assesses the bug to have had on the estate. Yes. Fifthly, we can see for most bugs, errors and defects, uh, whether it was notified to the post office 
and if so, when Fujitsu say the bug was communicated to the post office? Yes. But sixthly, we can see that the earliest bug of the 29 errors, uh, bugs, errors and defects, was in November 1999. It was one of the examples I took you to. So that was in the course of the national rollout. Yes, agreed. And the latest, I'm not going to take it to you now, was May 2018. That was the Bureau discrepancies bug, bug 14. Agreed. And so bugs, errors and defects afflicted the Horizon system on Fujitsu's own assessment for a period of nearly two decades. Y yes. And then lastly, uh, we can see Fujitsu's assessment of the length of time for which the bug was operative. And sometimes that was a substantial period of time. The first one I took you to, Calendar Square, for at least six years or 10 years by reference to Mr. Justice Fraser's findings. Yes. So I think it follows from this that it's plain that Fujitsu staff knew about bugs, errors and defects in Horizon well before 2010. Yes, I agree. Uh, Fujitsu staff knew of them on Fujitsu's own account from at least November 1999. Agreed. And that this recognition by Fujitsu reflected in your witness statement here doesn't need any investigata investigatory work to be undertaken by the inquiry. No, it doesn't. It's, it's, in, the, it's in the notes. I agree. It doesn't um, need uh, any application of judgment by anyone because it's here in black and white, in Fujitsu's own words, indeed in your own words. Agreed. When did Fujitsu um, realise that the bugs, errors and defects in its horizon system impacted on the evidence that was being relied on to investigate and prosecute sub-postmasters for criminal offences? Is that in my second statement? No. no. Um, this is going to the third statement, statement. essentially. So about I, litigation support. So, so I don't know the, the, the exact date of... Um, just repeat the question again, Mr. Yes. Mr. When me. did Fujitsu realise that the bugs, errors and defects in its horizon system impacted on the evidence that was being relied on to investigate and prosecute sub-postmasters for criminal offences? So I think in, my, in, in the company's second statement we draw attention to we, we knew... The company knew several times that that evidence that had been presented needed to be corrected given some bugs and errors or the data needed to be rerun. So I think there'd be several examples in the second uh, second statement which answers your question. I, I can't give you the exact date on each and every one of them. I think in each particular um, uh, uh, ARQ request, it would be applied differently. In other words, I'm asking, when did Fujitsu put two and two together and realise they added up to four? Mm -hmm. Four being, we need to tell the post office about these bugs, errors and defects, not because there's a problem with the system that we're selling to them, but because they're prosecuting sub-postmasters on the basis of the evidence that we're providing to them. So I think there's, there's, there's lots of evidence um, of us informing the post office of that data that we've just discussed, uh, bugs and errors, and how those bugs and errors did or did not uh, impact the, um, the, the financial position uh, as reported. W what the post office did with that particular piece of data, Mr. Beer, I, I do not believe Fujitsu knew at the time, but certainly latterly, of course, the company became more aware that it was being used nearly solely for, prosec for uh, prosecutions. Would you agree that the 29 summaries that we've just uh, looked at some examples of revealing bugs, errors and defects in the Horizon system um, ought to have been uh, revealed to the post office for the purposes 
of its investigatory and prosecutorial functions? So I don't know if, if they were not. Yeah, that's a different question. I'm asking, would you agree uh, that they ought to have been? Oh, uh, yes, I do. You know, I think, that um, Fujitsu employees provided um, witness statements to uh, the post office uh, for the purposes of um, the prosecution of sub-postmasters. And um, speaking in general terms, these bugs, errors, and defects did not find their way into those witness statements. Do you know why? I do not know why. I have seen um, examples of the witness statements. Um, on a personal level, I am surprised that that detail was not included in the witness statements given by Fujitsu staff to the post office. Um, and I have seen some evidence of of um, editing of witness statements uh, by, by others. Where there was a proposal, I think you're referring to, to include at least uh, a reference to some of the bugs or some data integrity problems, and they were edited out. Correct, Mr. Beer. And I uh, no doubt you would regard that as shameful. I would, yes, that would be one word I would use. What's the other one? Um, shameful, appalling. Um, my understanding of how our laws work in this country, um, that all of the evidence should have been put in front of the sub-postmaster that the post office was relying on to prosecute them. If we look at the diagram at the top, you'll see that um, it splits immediately. If that just can be blown up, the diagram, please. Thank you. Between... Um, on the right-hand side, an ARQ form, which is um, for prosecution support, and on the left-hand side, um, seemingly one which is not. Yes? Mm, yes. And it, it, it treats them um, differently. And you'll see that on the right-hand side, as we've just seen in the policy document, that um, step one <coughs> includes um, checking help desk logs. We've seen that. Uh, the second step is to analyze non-polling reports. And the third step is analyze the peaks. And as we've seen in the policy document, that's all about integrity of data. Yes. It, it doesn't include um, checking the known error log. That's neither in the diagram nor in the policy, does it? No, it doesn't. And so it's not in the diagram, it's not in the policy, and if we looked, it's not in the witness statement either, the, the boilerplate witness statement. Do you know why that is? That if you're wanting to look at the integrity of Horizon data, one wouldn't look at the known error log? I, I don't know why they wouldn't have done, and, and I would have expected a more holistic assessment of the entire environment um, that a sub-postmaster was using. Um, so I would have expected um, error logs and other matters to be presented and considered. In your um, reading of the materials, in your um, investigation of the issues and in the briefings you have received, uh, did you note any reluctance on the part of Fujitsu in the past to reveal the existence of a thing called the known error log? There is, in, in the um, submission to the inquiry today for number three, there is evidence of that, but don't, don't share with the post office yet. I don't, I don't know the, the individual situation where it was subsequently shared with, uh, with the post office, but there was certainly those reluctance. Whether that was 
just for completeness completeness to make sure that what was shared with the post office was complete versus I think um, it may well be but there's definitely evidence in in submissions from from in this uh, um, submission around exactly what you just described do you know why Fujitsu might be reluctant to reveal even the existence of something called the known error log no no I it, 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 the title is known ever log. It's, it's not unusual in a large system of certainly of this size that there will be errors and known errors. And certainly from the very outset, um, there were lists of them and communication between all parties. Um, how that was communicated to sub postmasters, I think, is slightly different. But known errors were known and lots of people knew them. Whether there were a particular one, Mr. Beer, to your question earlier, that might be a timing thing versus not trying to share it. I'm, I'm not at the moment delving into any individual cases as to why the known error log uh, was not revealed to a sub postmaster in a prosecution. I'm asking why it's missing from the process. Yeah, I, I have no idea why it's not. 